Disrupting Japan, Episode 8. Welcome to Disrupting Japan, straight talk from Japan's most successful entrepreneurs. I'm Tim Romero, and thanks for listening. Today, I sit down and talk with my friend Akiko Naka. Now, Akiko's company, Wantedly, is changing the way recruiting is done here. Now, recruiting in Japan has always been an intensely stylized and formal affair. And Wantedly is now running in the opposite direction and trying to change it into an extremely casual discussion. Resumes and work histories aren't even exchanged before the first meeting. And I have to admit, even I had trouble with the casual nature of Wantedly the first time I used it, but it undoubtedly gets results, and that's what's important. Now, when talking with successful women entrepreneurs, or successful women in general, I suppose, Journalists have a terrible tendency to focus on the relative novelty of being a successful woman.、Um, I have a number of female friends, both here in Japan and in San Francisco, who are entrepreneurs, and they all unanimously tell me that the so what's it like to be a woman entrepreneur question is highly annoying, or at the very least perplexing. I mean, how can anyone really answer that? They've got nothing to compare it to. You know, it's, it's a lot like when people ask me what it's like to be a foreign entrepreneur in Japan. It's simply too broad a question to get a handle on. It's almost like being asked what it's like to be named Tim. I don't really know, it's just who I am. Now, the fact of the matter is that despite laws and the Constitution itself guaranteeing gender equality here in Japan, There's still very strong discrimination against women here. In fact, this year Japan was ranked 104th out of 142 countries in gender equality by the World Economic Forum. That said, I think some perspective is needed. While it's easy to look at the current situation and see things that can be improved, it's also important to look at how far and how fast things have already improved. Um, for example, I'm an American, and America undoubtedly still has a long way to go in improving race relations. But it's important to remember just how much things have improved in recent decades. I was born in 1966, and at that time, it would have been illegal for my Japanese wife and I to be married in 16 of the 50 United States. Interracial marriage was actually a felony in America until 1967, and it wasn't approved of by the majority of Americans until as late as 1995. But we're here to talk about Japan today. And the point is that when you're looking at a bad situation, it's important and very constructive to remember how far things have already come, to remind ourselves that things really are getting better. Now, A little over a hundred years ago in Japan, women were, legally speaking, property. They belonged either to their fathers or their husbands. They had no legal rights and could not own property. Up until the 70s, Japanese banks and many other companies had mandatory retirement ages for women at about 25. Now, this requirement could be waived if the woman in question. Had married a male employee at the company, then she could continue working there. And until very recently, it was common for companies to advertise open positions that could only be filled by men. Now, today, although a lot of improvement has been made, a lot still remains to be done. Many salarymen and government bureaucrats find reporting to a female boss to be, well, almost shameful. And a woman attempting to climb the corporate ladder. Will often find her subordinates trying to sabotage her. But that's changing today, and women entrepreneurs like Akiko are doing a tremendous amount to improve things, not by campaigning or even talking about the issue directly, but by simply being very visible and very good at what they do. In fact, in our interview, Akiko talks about the importance of challenging the power structure indirectly rather than head on. So let's get right to the interview. I think you'll enjoy it. We're sitting here with Akiko Naka, CEO and founder of Wantedly.、Um, Akiko, I've been a fan of yours and a customer of Wantedly's for several years now. 
Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, I mean it. You, you guys are really changing the way recruiting is done in Japan. Um, and rather than having me explain it, why don't you give a brief explanation of what Wantedly is and what kind of uh, customers you have? Right. Wantedly has been running, I mean, we've been running Wantedly for over maybe three years. And we have about 5,000 clients, mostly、mm -hmm. startups in Japan and mostly in tech, company, tech industry, like web startups, web companies. And what differentiates differentiate Wantelly from other recruiting services is that Wantelly match, match people to make them pay casual office visits to the companies. Right. Yeah, so ordinary, ordinary job listing sites, they will apply and they'll send their resume and Go for interview. Now, this is something I have to admit that the first time I used Wantedly,、yep. I was a little confused by. Right, sure. <laughs> so, there's a lot of engineers using this, this、mm -hmm. platform to look for jobs, but most of them don't post a resume. True. They'll post an interest or they'll respond and say, hey, I want to come and visit your company and, right, and right, talk right, right. to you guys and maybe grab some coffee. Yeah, that's, that's、um, how it's working in Wantedly. For me, that was hard to, I, I found it surprising, refreshing. Right. But surprising. But have some of your, you're working with some big Japanese companies now. Ha, have they had a hard time getting used to this, this way of recruiting? Yes, definitely. So it is really hard to start in business with large companies.、Right. So we have like a few, like Suntry Corporation and Recruit and NTT Communications. But those are really rare cases. How have they reacted to. People who don't send a resume and just want to drop by. That must be shocking to a company like right, Recruit right, right. or Suntour. <laughs> <laughs> so, really, so, our sales team try really hard to explain how Wanderly works and how it's different from other recruiting sites in the beginning and make them understand or, or educate them in a way that they can control how to use Wanderly. <laughs> yes, it takes some time. So, for example, when、yeah, Suntour started using Wanderly, I think our sales team visited the company like three or four times. Right. And every time our sales team g o to the company, they meet with new people from up a higher level and they explain the whole thing. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so slowly educate those kind of part and eventually. <laughs> so was it successful? To have they hired people? I think they're still <laughs> listing their, their jobs,、okay. posting on but, Wantelly, yeah. But they're welcome to have people. Qualified people drop by the office and more wantedly. Yeah,、style. yeah, that's right. Interesting. So, yeah, and for example, other companies like Recruit, so they successfully hired e n g i n e e r through Wantedly. There's a team in Recruit Corporation, and, and the team inside the company had a really hard time to persuade their management team、uh -huh. to use Wantedly because historically, people in, at Recruit they were allowed to use a recruiting solution which Recruit. Themselves, themselves provided, right. yeah. Right. But the person inside the team, he wanted to hire a really good engineer, and the, he thought、um, there's no way hiring a nice, a good, good enough engineer through their own site. So he had I don't know, a negotiation internally several、right. times, yeah, and they eventually used Wantedly and successfully hired someone. So the reputation spread within the corporation, and afterwards, a few other teams started using Wantedly too. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's really saying something that you're being used, that recruit is using wantedly to, I know, to I know. recruit. I mean, and, and for our foreign listeners, recruit is by far the biggest recruiting agency in Japan. Right, 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 right. I mean, I'm not even sure who second place is. That, <laughs> they are that big. Yeah, definitely. They recently went public, so they're even bigger now. Well, another thing, I mean, everybody talks, social recruiting has kind of become a, a buzzword、uh, of. And most people, it means things like posting ads and Facebook and,、right. and things like that. But Wantedly has actually built up a community、mm -hmm. that, that interacts with the, each other, that talks about the jobs, that talks about the companies. Ten years ago, the idea of job applicants evaluating the company would be almost unthinkable here. Right.、Um, the, the power structure worked one way only. Right, right. So, What's been the reaction of some of your bigger customers or just、uh, some big companies in general to having job seekers evaluate the company? I think our case is very like, specific because Wantelly is very good to 
hire engineers, right? right? Like, until it works well to hire engineers. And engineer is really competitive people to hire right now in Japan because there's, like, not much... There's a real shortage of engineers. Yeah, right, right. So, like, even larger companies, they tried everything to hire those you know, good engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, there's, like, how can we even possibly hire engineers? And there comes one daily. So they're, like, welcome to try anything. So they're just desperate. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and if it works, they'll they'll keep using it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so do you think it's just the the companies aren't paying attention to the discussion, or that they've accepted the fact that it's uh, okay in this internet social age for people to be talking about them, both positive and negative? Yeah, I think people are starting to accept the fact that people are discuss discussing about the violation of the company. You know, there's a site called uh, Glassdoor in, in the US sure, yeah. and there's a similar site in Japan becoming growing really fast and that's built by LiveSense okay. where they're actually posting salaries and, yeah, that's and right. That's right. reviews of companies yeah that's interesting I mean that I think is a wonderful trend in Japan yeah, and I know, one I know. That's, that's overdue <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah so like those different sites are approaching to change things these days and I think HR people are starting to realize the fact that things are changing. <laughs> That's good. In a way, it's almost funny. I mean, obviously, the internet is what's made this possible. Right. But it's almost funny that it's happening now where there is more job seekers than jobs. Right. Whereas 30 years ago, there were far more jobs than there were job seekers. Right, right, right. right. But so despite good. that, the power is shifting to the, the uh, talented individuals. That's a good thing. Yeah. But I don't think that's happening in like all role. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's particularly happening in the tech industry or tech related roles. Okay. Where there are severe job shortages. Or excuse me. Where there are severe talent shortages. Yeah, that's right. So some occupations like maybe retail seller or maybe delivery boys <laughs> or that kind of, there are some jobs that being, I don't know, having really hard time finding jobs. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I guess that's the same way everywhere. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, one thing I, I was very impressed by you when we first started using your company, mm -hmm. when we first started using Wantedly, wow, two, almost three years ago now. Right. You actually came to our office. Yeah, I remember that. Talked about what we liked, what we didn't like, and what was fascinating is you actually listened. Right. And Japan has been a nation of customer surveys that are mailed out, and they'll ask you to ask 50 different questions. And, <laughs> Um, so I was really impressed that you seem to be really living the whole concept of this social networking and social recruiting. And I wanted to get your thoughts on what you've done differently, because I see Wantedly employees, a lot of networking events. Um, I'm bumping into you guys all over the place. <laughs> Can I get your general, general thoughts about the importance of community in both building startups and in recruiting so in terms question. of yeah, in terms of building a, an organization or mm -hmm. team in startups, I think the vision is really important. So so as you probably know, the job listing on Wantedly they don't discuss anything about salary or salary or conditions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's very general on both sides. Yeah, right. They only talk about like what they do, how they do, or why they do what they do, kind of things. So it's all about vision uh, rather than salary. All the startups and all the companies should act like that. So ourselves also act like having um, act like that too. So, so more of, of communicating the the vision of the company rather than the the job description. That's right. We, we don't really care about. We do care about, but like skill is not that important when we do hire people. So you're looking for a cultural fit. That's right. Yeah. So the first thing is, I think more than half of the company's uh, CEO are not really aware of import importance of vision. Okay. Yeah, so they don't even, they probably might have vision inside their heart, but they don't really, I don't know. They don't explain it well? Explain or, yeah. Like most of the CEOs think employees know what's important, but they're not really speaking out. Well, that's unfortunately not unique to Japan. I think that is <laughs> a universal condition of <laughs> people well, work. Yeah. So what, what is Wantedly's vision? So our vision is, in Japanese, it's, we're saying, 仕事で心躍る人を増やす 
which meaning、uh, we want to make people happier when working. Yeah. Most of the people, I think, work for money, work to live.、Sure. But I think our vision is to make people make live to work. Yeah, there's been a lot of of great companies formed around that that kind of an idea. Yeah,、um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In America, Zappos is one of the famous examples. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think Zappos is one of the like very strong vision oriented company. Yeah. Too. I'm trying to be really careful to explain our vision. I have to repeat saying that like. I think I have to say over maybe ten times to make people understand what I'm thinking. So、right. we have this unique culture called culture lunch every week. So I have lunch with three employees like every week and <laughs> go over all the whole vision and why we do what we do and like <laughs> yeah I explain every single single thing and they probably have started to think like、oh, Akiko is speaking the same thing again and that's But they a good don't forget、thing. it. Well, Or sometimes they do. <laughs> they do. They do. They might. They might remember. But like, if I say maybe like more than ten that ten times, they can maybe starting to repeat or like tell to other people. So. So it becomes a part of them. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Do you think that Wantedly's unique approach to this type of recruiting is unique to Japan, or do you have plans to expand overseas as well? I think this model will work in other countries too, because. Wantedly is optimized for optimized optimized to startups,、yeah. so it's really cheap. It doesn't really cost much to start using, and if you have high、um, literacy, internet literacy. Did you say literacy? Yeah, internet literacy. Yeah, so Wantedly is not really tied to the culture. So、okay. all the startups startups in different countries, like there are many startups seen right in these days. Right. Like the U.S., Europe, and Southeast Asia, and all those startups in different. Areas have same, I think, pretty much same culture, and so wantedly we can place our products in those areas. That's what I'm thinking. Do you have any plans you can talk about, or is it just more? Yes,、uh, it's definitely really.、Yeah? So we have few people that probably will join next year to help with the overseas expansion. Right, right, right. That's exciting. I know. Congratulations. <laughs> yes,、yeah, so、I'd be looking for those people for like over half a year. To hire、yeah. someone who can look over like overseas the name, but did you hire them、uh, unwantedly? Unwantedly, yeah. Of course.、Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd、yeah. be very disappointed if you did. <laughs> sure. So I'm really excited. We want to look at South Southeast Asia as the, the most important market. Singapore. Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia. I think Southeast Asia is pretty much the same. Okay.、Whole. Well, let me ask you about about you. Yeah, sure. So you you worked at、uh, Goldman Sachs for a while,、right. and then Facebook, and then then quit to start Wantedly. So was that a hard decision, or was that some, or is starting your own company something you you always wanted to do? It was very difficult decision to make when I was working for Goldman Sachs because.、Yeah. Have you ever worked for a large company? Maybe you have. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. No, I, I've worked for Fujitsu for a while. Oh wow, <laughs> Zurich huge Financial, company. And yeah.、I've, When you get used to getting salary like every same day on every every month, you kind of expect that to happen like going forward. And、yeah. It's a very scary thing when you don't have that. <laughs> right, right, right. So when you started to think about, oh, what if the salary won't stop coming, and then your imagination can yeah well, bring to very scary places. What made you sort of? What was the thing that made you overcome the scary parts and just do it? My mom. Used to, I mean, she's still working as a professor at universities.、Uh-huh. So I grew up seeing her. She worked really so hard, and she really enjoyed working. To her, job is not like a obligation. It's more like a, their, her hobby. So it sounds like you 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 got a lot of your philosophy about work from your mom. That's right. <laughs> yeah. When I was small, I thought when I grew up, I'd probably have like same thing, like my job as my hobby. And then、uh, it turned out to not. That's yeah. You can't yeah. really do that at Goldman Sachs. <laughs> yeah, I was too late to realize that. <laughs> so once I realized that, and so I wasn't really afraid of quitting. I mean, I was afraid, but at, but at the same time, I knew that I had to quit, and I knew at some point if I continue do my whatever work I wanted to, and then I can become like mom someday. So、right. yeah, I had a belief in that. My mom's, I don't know, history. So yeah, that's, that's great. So your your family and friends were really supportive of your decision to start a company. I didn't really start a company straight after I quit Goldman Sachs. Right. So, I wanted to become a manga artist. 
Really? Yes. Yeah, right. I didn't know that. You wanted to draw manga. Yeah, that's right. Well, you you really are a a, a geeky girl. <laughs> you you because you were programming from a really young age too, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. That's that was my that was influence from my dad. So he used to teach. I mean, he's still teaching, but he's he teaches computer science at university. So. Yeah, so anyways, I really liked drawing. All right. And, You're right, and right. so many people want to become manga, manga artists. So I was one of them. And I thought it's really, really competitive. It's really even harder, harder to become manga, manga artist than to join Goldman Sachs, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the pay is not nearly as good. Well, actually, if you have like mega hit manga, you become really, really rich. That's true. Like all show business, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. I was like 25 years old, and I thought, well, if I try so hard, maybe I can become a mangaka, manga artist. Uh-huh. So I quit Goldman Sachs and drew manga for a year. And while I was writing, drawing manga, I started this new website called Magazine. So Magazine is a place where people can post their manga. So to try to find, so so uh, manga artists can try to find readers. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And people from around the world can comment on those manga illustration, and that was the concept. It turned out I wasn't really, I didn't really have talent <laughs> to become a manga artist. So, <laughs> so I wanted to do something else to, I don't know, utilize my drawing skill <laughs> right, right. or creativity. So I ended up building this site, this magazine thing, and. I wanted to promote this site, so I participated at the conference called IVS. You heard of? IVS? IVS, mm-hmm. um, Infinity, Infinity Ventures Summit. Oh, Infinity Ventures, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so, a, one of the bigger summits here in Japan. Yeah, that's right. So I joined the summit, and there I met like a global head of Facebook. I was going to pitch my site, but Japanese country manager, he wanted me to join Facebook as like a... I don't know, assistant. So I was like, eh, I want to do my own site. But it, was it sounds really- like he's a good salesman. You were trying to pitch him on investing in your company, and he convinced you to join. Yeah, Facebook. that's right. That's <laughs> right. That was a counter offer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, eventually I decided to join Facebook. I thought it was really, I don't know, exciting. Yeah. And I was allowed to continue my magazine. Okay. At the same Is the site too. still running? No, no oh, longer. That's a shame. <laughs> that's true, but. So that's how I joined Facebook Japan, and I was there for like half a year. And then at the time, I, I saw a huge opportunity coming towards Japan. But that was like back in 2011. Okay. I felt like Facebook was starting to take over Japanese social network scene, and there was a huge new platform, right? Right. Well, they were pushing out Mixi very quickly. Yeah, that's right. And many new products like... You know, Reti? Yeah. Yeah, like social something website was like becoming That was the popular. trend of that time, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and there was a guy at Yahoo that I respect, and he was in the industry for like over 20 or 30 years. Right. And he said, Akiko, like this is another trend coming from 2011 will be like really, really big. And they'll be like so huge. And there was like a two wave. In the yeah. past, did you know? Like the so first wave was like late nineties. So at the time, like Rakuten and yeah. Yahoo Japan was like went public. And another another wave was back in two thousand or two thousand ten. And that was like DNA agree and those companies went public. And he said, Akiko, like another wave coming uh, will be like so huge that those two waves will be like nothing compared to the the one that, coming that now. That seven year cycle. Kind of, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought, okay, <laughs> if I miss this chance, I'll be like, I was like 26. So I thought I'll be like 30-something if I miss this chance. I thought, I want to do, I want to, yeah, do my own. And that's how I quit Facebook and started my own product. How did your friends and family react to you quitting Facebook, which is a great company? My parents didn't really care anymore. They thought I'm crazy already, like enough to quit <laughs> company. They'd like right? up on you or something? <laughs> well, like... <laughs> They're really liberal people, so they don't really um, expect child to do something that they want to. So well, that's great. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they don't really. Um, I think they are really nice parents. I didn't really tell my friends. I was like really focusing on work at the time, so I didn't really hang out with some friends. Okay. Yeah. Well, after like several years, I only focused on work. I didn't really meet friends. <laughs> I like hanging out with friends, but 
you know, sometimes it could be. Um... I, I know what you mean. <laughs> no, believe me, I know exactly what you mean. I, I, I've started several companies on my own, and you yeah. do get yeah. Well, you have to focus because it, it's back to your vision thing. I mean, you're the one that understands it. Everyone's looking at you and how you're right. you're working and. You're setting an example for everyone to follow. So yeah, you, you do end up focusing. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. yeah. If I meet friends, they'll probably talk about like my boss is like so asshole and like whatever that kind of conversation. Well, will being CEO, you can't really complain <laughs> about the boss anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, hanging out hanging out with friends will probably not be really fun anymore at the time. Okay. So yeah. Well, Akiko, there, there's something that I know every female founder I know hates to be asked. What it's like to be a, a woman founder. So I'm not going to ask you that. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I realize it's a silly question. Okay. But we've got a lot of foreign listeners. Uh, Japan has what I think is a well deserved reputation、right. of discrimination against women.、Mm-hmm. I, I think the、um, World Economic Forum just ranked Japan as something like 104th out of 140 <laughs> companies. Okay. Or 140 countries. Are there more opportunities for women now starting their own companies as entrepreneurs compared to working in a large company? Do you think it's opening doors on a large scale for Japanese women? I'm not really sure if it is a large scale or not, but there are women in this in- industry running a company, and absolutely, there are quite a few. And I think running a startup is more, I don't know, fair in a way, rather than. Working for larger companies. Fair how? Just people are more interested in simple results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to say. Okay. <laughs> and also, women are minorities, right? Right. So minorities most of the time get really、uh, better attention than majority. So in terms of PR, women are have better chance of exposing their product. So I think that's a really lucky thing. Well, that's true. And I, I, I have to admit, as a foreigner, I've done the same thing. <laughs> Anything that's different gets a, it's great for getting attention. In larger companies,、right. you know, there are a lot of Japanese men who have a really hard time reporting to a woman boss.、Right. And in your case, and maybe also some of your your friends who are also women entrepreneurs, have you run into that kind of a problem as a startup founder? Have you had trouble recruiting because you're a woman? Hmm. I don't know. I probably wouldn't be able to know that because if people didn't, I don't know, decline our job offer because of that, I probably wouldn't be able to know that. Well, that's true. <laughs> We're not going to tell you that. They won't tell you that. But when I when I first came to Japan in 1988,、mm-hmm. which wasn't that long ago, right, 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 things were very, very different. Yeah, I think it is still different in larger traditional Japanese companies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I think I know.、Uh, there's one thing I can say about women. You say you have many women doing inter,、uh, entrepreneur,、yeah. right? And I think there are many women working as their own. And、yeah. I think there's a trend that women tend to prefer like their small team rather than growing their company large. Do you see that trend? Interesting. Like Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. You know the Katsuma, Katsuma Kazuo. Yeah, yeah, she's like very famous Japanese yeah, yeah.、Uh, women symbol in Japan, but like she's running a, a small company, but like there's really small, and I think and she has like community where she has many j- women friends who run like a small company, but they all tend to be really small. So I think I came to conclusion that women are not really good at scaling the team, or maybe they are not interested in scaling the team. So you think they're more just a, it's a lifestyle choice rather than a、um, dreams of world domination. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that could be one possibility. Or maybe women are not really good at scaling the team. I mean, well, there's plenty of women who have who have scaled. Yeah, you know, true. That's not, true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So they, there are certainly examples of it. Right. Okay, that's that's great. One of the things I think is going to have to change in Japan、mm-hmm. is, you know, Japan is a very strict、uh, hierarchical right. society. Right, it's, right. it's a top-down、right. society, and one of the things that I love to see about, well, companies like Wantedly are challenging that hierarchy. Okay,、um, it, it's flattening out, blogging, taking power away from the the TV networks and the radios,、mm-hmm. um, to companies like Wantedly taking a lot of the power away from from well companies like Recruit. <laughs> I was wondering if this is a trend that that you see as well, or is this just Tim's imagination? 
in a way, I think it's really maybe superficial. You know, Harimon, he really challenged to those、uh, establishment in like maybe like it was five years ago or maybe more than that. And he was like beautifully crushed. <laughs> well, that was that is. Oh wow, we don't have time to explain it on the podcast, but it is a company that grew very very fast. Yeah.、Uh, he was jailed for something that is technically illegal, but is very commonly done. Right, right, right. In, in the industry, because he he went head to head with some of the most powerful right right companies and individuals in this country.、Mm-hmm. But he's back now. He's back now, but he's like so、um, powerless. He's trying to do so many things, but he has a criminal record, so yeah, he can't really do. Yeah, people are keeping their distance. Yeah, so people are seeing what's happening to him and like learning. It's not really smart thing to obviously challenge the establishment. You can you can still challenge the establishment, but you can do it like you have to do it really smartly. So d- don't to... don't challenge them so directly. Yeah, directly. Yeah. Or、true. don't challenge them so high up on the establishment. <laughs> Or I think directly is the right word. Okay. Yeah. So, growing up as a stu- as a student and seeing those news on TV, and now seeing Harimon coming back to the world, and but still not having being really powerless, I think all the young entrepreneurs are really convinced that we are not really. It's not really smart way to directly. Challenge those、um, establishments. Well, what's fascinating is I I do a lot of teaching and mentoring、right. on entrepreneurship, and an awful lot of students and young entrepreneurs really look up to Horimon. <laughs> they they they're like they they really admire really? him. Yeah, just、okay. for his for his guts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you think most successful startups in Japan are are doing that? They're they're challenging in indirect ways. I think so. Like partners partnershiping with like. Larger companies. In a sense, though, I think what you are—you're competing with recruit, but in a sense, you are challenging them very indirectly. You're,、right. you're doing something that they don't do, that they probably couldn't really do if they they wanted to. Right, right, right. Because it's right. so different from the way they their business works. I think organization structure is so different that we are like very engineer focused, engineer、right. centralized organization team, and they are like sales oriented team. So. They're trying to change. Have you heard that? Like, yeah, Recruit is like saying they want to become like a tech company. I I, I am very skeptical any time a huge <laughs> company announces that they're change, going、yeah. to change their corporate culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's what I.、Agree. It usually、yeah. doesn't happen. I know. So I think the important thing is the attitude towards those establishment. You can still challenge, but you can't. You can't really be like hostile. So you have to be respectful of respectful, the establishment. Respectful, yeah, but at the same time you can challenge, kind of. Okay. Thing is more, I think, much smarter. You have to be sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let's shift gears for a minute.、Um, what surprised you the most about starting and running your own company? I learned that there's a different t- phases. Building a company or doing setups, setups. So first phase is zero to one. Okay. And another is one to ten or one to zero to one. You have only have to focus on products. And I, I'm like I always being a product product person. Right. So I I really like drawing. I really liked creating and building things. So building products was like a really fun thing to do. But when team grew. More, maybe like more than five people or ten people, you probably have to start thinking about how to run a company rather than maybe like still five or ten is still small, but you still have you probably have to start thinking about culture or strategy or. So you you were were you surprised at how how little time you could spend on the product and how much time you were spending on like administration and and people things? Right, right. More than administration, you have. Focusing on culture these days. So、uh-huh. say like I've been running Montelli for like three years. So first year I only focus on products. After half one half year, I realized I need to focus on like team and culture and strategy. So there was like there's a business team and development team and corporate corporate team. So back in time, I really wanted to do my product. So I didn't really care about what's happening in sales team, but that was a really bad thing. Became like really out of control, and well, it makes the sales team feel like they're not important. Sure, and they couldn't like meet their goals. So it was fun for me to focus on product, but 
it's not good for the company, right? So, right. Yeah. Well, this is something that I think um, it's really important. It's a transition everyone goes through. I mean, you, you had to transition from programmer, a manga artist, <laughs> into a, a businesswoman. Yeah, that's um, right. So let me ask you this. What did you have to change about yourself to, to make that transition? What skill did you have mm. to learn or what, what did you have to change about your personality to make that transition? <laughs> So my personality haven't really changed a lot, but I had to convince myself that building a team is a really fun thing, same as building product. Yeah, and it's, it's really okay. working. <laughs> you, you put it in the perspective of you're still building something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Well, what advice would you give someone who's thinking of starting a company in Japan? The most impo- important thing is to build a right team in the beginning. I think two or three will be the best. And have to be like, it's like really commonly said thing, but no, um, I agree. It's so important. <laughs> hacker and designer and like hustler, right? Yeah, and that's really important. So because I started only by myself in the beginning, so I was like trying to make Wantley work for the first year by myself, and it barely worked. Like it, there was there was no progress. Like yeah, I was building site, but. I didn't have anyone else to discuss the idea, so right. it was like so slow. But I, I found my co-founder, and he's my he used to be my ex colleague back in Goldman Sachs. At the time, he quit the company, and he was thinking about maybe going to um, college overseas. So he was doing nothing, so I was like, "Oh, oh hey, do you want to help up, help my company?" And he eventually joined. But oh, okay, That's yeah, great. that was a very good thing that happened to Juan Dilly. And, and the core team is all still here? Yeah, still here. Oh, that, that's awesome. <laughs> and shortly after, CTO joined the company. And those three people, like, three team was like, really, really strong. And that's what making Wantelli really strong. So now. both their skills and the way they work together? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's about all we have time for, I think. Okay. So let me just, let me just ask you, our listeners want to get in touch with you or Wantedly? What's What's the best way? So we have a website, site.wantelli.com, okay. or you can Google Wantelli and you can find a corporate site. But we'll, it's, we'll put all the links up on the website. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. And there's a contact form, so please contact us. It's only in Japanese, but don't be afraid. Okay. <laughs> okay, listen, thanks so much for joining us. This has been a really great conversation. Me too. Thank you for having me. Okay, fantastic. And we're back. Akiko's comments on the importance of challenging the established power structure indirectly is great advice for anyone. Um, It's a very solid and proven strategy that goes back to Sun Tzu's Art of War, where he stated that such a tactic is essential for overcoming any powerful foe. I think we'll be hearing a lot from Akiko and from Wondedly in the years to come. If you want to see the links and resources that Akiko and I talked about during the interview, or to get in touch with her on social media, check out the link section of the post at disruptingjapan.com slash show eight. Let us know what you think about Wantedly, Japan, or startups in general by leaving a comment at the site or sending email to feedback at disruptingjapan.com. This is Tim Romero, and thanks for listening to Disrupting Japan.